Well, let's let's call the let's meeting start. to order. Okay. And um, first item of business is approval. Do we of, have a, do we have a quorum? We do. We have five members here. Well, oh, six, Linda. including Linda. Oh yeah, Linda. So we definitely have a quorum. So first item of business oh, is. Five. Who am I forgetting? Who am I? Oh. Well, there's you. Oh, Karen. Karen. I yeah. Okay, I didn't see Karen. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, sorry. That's okay. All right, so we need to take a look at the minutes from last month and see if anyone has any changes to the minutes. I have one. Okay. Uh, there's a uh, paragraph in there that uh, speaks of my my presentation mm -hmm. um and uh, i th would be more comfortable with a somewhat different wording you, you know, want to send it to me excuse me want to send it to me want to send yes it yes I'll, I'll i'll send it to you the my, my point is that uh, um i the group that i uh, have worked with um in trying to uh, advocate for hearing loss with the town is is a volunteer uh group uh we're not officially anything <laughs> we're, we're just you know we have just been a, a, a group of people who have hearing loss and who have educated themselves about it so and what um, did i say well i i don't have the original uh, in front of me at the moment. I just have a preferred uh, wording. Um, anyway, I, I will send it to you. Okay. Good. So I don't have to. Do, I mean, I don't have to have that reapproved. He'll just send it. I'll, I'll reinsert it, and that will be the end. And then I'll send it in. Yeah, Jennifer, you have your hand. Um, Janet, can you just add me to the attendees? list at the top of the minutes say that again and can you just add me to the attendees oh. at the top of the list i didn't i didn't have your name up mm -hmm. oh i'm sorry that's okay otherwise i have no other issues with the minutes they, they were fine okay so so two edits to the minutes one the attendees and the other bob's presentation yeah. Anything else? Does someone want to make a motion? I'll move to approve the minutes as per the changes, but as long as Bob's content doesn't change the content. Um, yes. Yeah. I, I assume it will not change the content. It will just straighten out the misunderstanding. Yeah. Okay. I'll call the roll. Jennifer? Okay. Um, yes. I. Bob? Here. Jean? Yes. Karen. Karen. Yes. Okay. And I think Karen sec seconded the motion. Okay. Oh. And who moved it, Jennifer? No. Yes. Me. Mm -hmm. Who moved it? Me. Jennifer. Who moved it? Jennifer moved it. I don't think we've ever put in. I have never put in, I don't think, who moved and seconded. I don't remember putting that in, did I? I think I just say minutes were approved. Okay, that's fine then. I, I don't think I ever did the extra. Okay. Well, we'll have it for posterity in the, the video. Yeah, that's right. Anybody, if anybody wants to know who moved, they can watch the whole video. <laughs> Great. Okay. So um, the first item of business actually, or next item of business is the questionnaire. But unfortunately, both Mary Beth and Lloyd are not able to be here tonight. So we'll have to put that to the next meeting. Um, and then we wanted to sort of follow up on the blind child drop-off and Megan, I know you maybe have a little bit of info you can share on that. Sure. Hi, everyone. Megan Zmudo here. Um, I did speak with um, the resident who brought the issue um, to our attention a few months ago. 
And um, our next step was going to be to go out and do a site visit with our town engineer so we can get a full understanding of, of the request and um, just try to understand exactly what, what they're looking for and how we can be helpful. Um, the, the, the resident was out of town with her family uh, recently, so I think we'll be scheduling it in the next couple of weeks. So I'll be I'll be sure to follow up with an update once we go out there and kind of look at the layout. Um, I know I think one of the issues was school, bus drop off and pick up. So I don't know what the situation is for the summer with the family, um, but so I, I can't say for sure if that's taking a break during the summer or not. But either way, it'd be helpful to have a full understanding and do what we can now, um, you know, prior to the fall school year. Sure. Well, and it's a good good time that you have a few months to, you know, make some determination about it. Okay. So um, what do you want in the minutes about that? You're meeting with? Yes, I met with, um, I believe her name is Melissa. I'm just was only 90% sure. So I didn't want to say it out loud, but it's, um, and, and uh, we're planning a site visit to assess the request. Okay. Okay. Oops. Sorry, I've got too many windows open, I think. Um, so there's been quite a concern about the railroad crossing. Um, there have been two instances that we know of uh, where someone has tried to cross the railroad tracks at um, right at the Junction Park area, um, coming from the Concord Park side. And the front wheels of the wheelchair have gotten stuck in the tracks. Um, actually, uh, Nat from the um, Bruce Freeman Rail Trail first heard about that. Um, I actually witnessed one of the incidents a couple of weeks ago, and um, I went out day before yesterday to take a picture. Let's see if I can share my screen so you'll see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Jean, if you can't find that photo, um, I think most of us were on, at least all of us should have been on the email thread and saw Nat's pictures. Um, the one I thought was the most illustrative is the one that had his water bottle mm -hmm. tucked, tucked into the gap, um, which is obviously um, far too wide right. uh, to be considered accessible. Um, so if you can't find it, I, I, I think we all remember that was a that was a that was a pretty clear illustration of what yes. the, the problem was there. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you should be seeing the tracks now. Actually, I, we're only seeing um, a collection of all of the. <laughs> oh, all right. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Too many okay. pictures. Um, at any rate, I went out and, and I measured it and the gap is three inches wide and two inches deep. Um, and there is a, 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 um, a solution that, that looks pretty workable that is used by train, train tracks in other states that Mary Beth came up with, a, a flange filler and um, so Megan, have you been in contact with um, with Representative Cataldo since since yesterday? Yes, I just okay. I did just get a, a note back. So okay, um, and just to fill in the commission, yeah. Once once our office became aware of it, um, we had our public works team and engineer go out and do a visit, and that was when it was the temporary um, kind of overlay. And mm -hmm. then we heard from Kilos, the MBTA's contractor, that they, they were going to be paving. So we were like, okay, great. Like, this is scary, but maybe it will be resolved. Um, but then unfortunately, 
the proposal, the the paving is is what you all saw in that photo, which is does not seem adequate. Um, so we did follow up with Kilos and shared the gap filler method that's used in other in other places. And the response from them was like, we're, we're, we did it to the MBTA standards. So now it's like, mm -hmm. okay, the MBTA standards doesn't isn't good enough. And um, it's so hard, right, from concrete from our perspective, because it's like we don't have the jurisdiction. But one thing I was just I was so impressed with this commission and the Bruce Re Freeman Rail Trail and and contacting um, Representative Cataldo. And it's been very it's felt very unified voice. How can we make this happen? And here's a solution. So I mean, like it should be. You know, and I mean, if Concord needed to contribute to this, it's like this is a huge emergency that we need to fix. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm feeling terrified um, and also encouraged that we do all seem to be on the same page. And so I'm hopeful. But to answer your question, um, I did get a note this this evening, this afternoon from um, Kyle Stapleton, who is the... Um, either the legislative liaison or chief of staff for, for Representative Cataldo. He said they have been in contact with the MBTA regarding the issue. Um, per their liaison with the capital projects team, the accessibility team within the MBTA is now aware of the situation, which we also told them to, but I, I don't know if yeah. everyone's talking to each other. Um, and plans being worked on to address this. However, they're not committing to a quick fix, which is what we're pressuring them to do. And then he asked if the town has had communications with the MBTA or Kilos regarding this or other issues in the past and had a good response. So I don't know, since I'm new, um, kind of what our relationship has been with, with the MBTA and Kilos. So I'm going to try to do some fact finding on our end. But I'll tell you, I mean, we were trying to reach out to the compliance person and didn't really get very far. So I right now, I does, I, the Kilos person yeah. answered the phone right away, but they don't have the power. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know what you all think about that. So hey, I would Megan, say, what is that word you're saying after MBTA and what? Kilos is the company that- How do you spell it? K, hold on, let me double check. Let's see. I think it's Keolis. Yeah. K E O L I S. You're right. K what? K E O L I S. Yeah, I think I think that's right. And that's the company that does what? They're the contractor that I think manages the transportation program. For the state. They, they, I think they manage the um commuter rail piece of it out okay. here or, or yeah. yeah they're handling that yeah okay so i i will say that as a commission as a whole our our relationship with the mbta has not been adversarial but they have not been helpful they they have not followed up on things that that we have asked them about yeah i see jennifer you're you're shaking your head you've been on the the commission as long as i have and um early on um we went with um alice kaufman from the select board and um and carrie atkins corey atkins sorry um and met with representatives from the MBTA about making the Concord Center stop accessible because it's absolutely not. And um, they kind of said, well, it's on our 450 year plan to get it fixed. I'm sorry, that's that's that that was a little <laughs> outrageous. But but you know, yeah, it's on our plan to get to it, but we haven't gotten to it. And um, and that you know we we would have to spend um, a, a huge amount of money to build a new platform that would be accessible, and they weren't really amenable to some sort of lower tech temporary fixes or to putting in a um, a platform like there is in West Concord. So that, that's been kind of how things were. Jennifer, go ahead. Um, just a second, your point, 
Jean, I think Megan, um, we I deal with the MBTA occasionally through our professional work, and they're notoriously difficult to deal with. Um, from the commission's perspective, I think we've, to be honest, we've only, and fair, we've only ever really engaged the MBTA on this very big issue of a commuter rail <laughs> accessibility. And that is a ongoing, long-term kind of capital projects objective for MBTA. And there are lots of towns that have this need for new accessible commuter rail stations. So in some ways, it's not all that unusual, their response to us regarding that particular issue, because it's such a, a big ask and it was such it's such a it's such a, a big project to, to manage. I, I would say though that Jean, our commission hasn't gone to the MBTA with small fixes though, with, with, no. with like an issue like like the one we're talking about now, where there is a, I think the paving made it worse. At, right. at the train yeah. tracks at West Concord, that crossing, it wasn't mm -hmm. as dangerous as it is now. That feels like a much different problem to go to the MBTA with than the one we've previously gone to or ever gone to them with. Mm -hmm. So on this kind of scale of issue, Megan, we've never really engaged MBTA before, um, mostly because, I, like I said, I think this recent work has made the problem worse. Mm -hmm. um, and to be perfectly honest, someone could die on the tracks in that. I mean, that's that's the terrifying thing. So whether or not they want to do a quick fix, I think our commission needs to be proactive about acknowledging that there's a there's a real issue there that for the on behalf of the town, just to make sure people understand that it's it's a dangerous crossing if you're trying to use a mobility device that has those small and possibly the non-air filled tires, you know, those like those mm -hmm. small, hard plastic yeah. wheels. So, um, so that, that I just think we've never really engaged at this level with MBTA before. I'm wondering- Well, that's true. And, and you know, for for the MBTA also, that, that gap is also dangerous to women with high, or per, people who wear high heels, um, who it could e they could easily stumble, fall on the tracks, be quite injured just from falling. And there are three crossings there. It's not just the one. So <laughs> it's compounded because people right. cross in different places. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think you have to cross the tracks in order to use the train station. So, yep. so if you're right. using, I mean, it, they're out of compliance in like a really big way. <laughs> so it's not yeah. just like a, a small little thing. It, it's like, it's dangerous, but they're also you know far out of compliance. And then the tricky part, I think from Bruce Freeman's perspective is that it breaks the whole chain in terms of the accessibility of the Bruce Freeman rail trail. That like that, I know it sounds crazy, but that gap makes a break in in the, mm -hmm. in the piece of spaghetti like there's there's the north half and the south half and then there's this gap in the center that if you are using a mobility device it's not a bicycle wheel i think a bicycle wheel could probably get over that just fine yeah. um it becomes an issue for them as well from that perspective mm -hmm. so so you know i had plans to reach out to the mbta also reach out to the Architectural Access Board. And I kind of put that on hold when, when Simon Cataldo jumped in and said, I'm gonna reach out. I'm, I'm happy to, to sort of pick that up again. I don't know if he's actually reached out to the AAB and I don't, I don't know if the AAB, you know, really has a dog in the fight. Um, we could we could certainly make a complaint to them about this. I was wondering about that too. Um, if that's the path forward, because it's it's so frustrating to hear that this is the standard of the MBTA, and it's mm -hmm. like it's so dangerous. So I don't right. I'm not sure the best way to move forward. I mean, I could respond to Representative Cataldo and, and ask that. I mean, maybe it's a couple pronged approach, like. I'm feeling, I feel like we're all feeling this like sincere urgency to right. maybe hit this a couple different ways. So mm -hmm. like maybe when I reply to him, I can ask for um, 
a connection to meet, to have a meeting with the accessibility team from the MBTA. That's who he's mm -hmm. saying is aware. So I could be like, sure. number one, can we meet with them? And maybe it'd be a couple members of the commission, you know, or, or however, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, if open meeting law piece, but like figure out a way to get in front of them. Number one, mm -hmm. maybe it's a letter and with photos. Um, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about, you know, I think what you just brought up, Jennifer, about the break in the Bruce Freeman is huge. The other one is the the mix of residents in the general in neighborhood. Mm -hmm. There are, I believe, to be uh, a high number of seniors that are mobily challenged. And, and this is the green space that they go to, to be right. outside. And it's like, you have to cross it. It's like the percentage of people in wheelchairs coming across there, it's probably higher than any point in Concord. And this is where mm -hmm. the problem is. Um, so it's like, maybe it's a complaint and it's a letter like mm -hmm. with the photos. I, so I'm happy to help however I can, um, in, in, you know, bringing this to the highest level that we can. Mm -hmm. so let me know how I can help out. I have a question, uh, pending, uh, some action, uh, through these communications with the, uh, um mbta etc um is there some way that a warning you know can be issued uh to the people who might be threatened you know by uh this crossing um you know it's, it's certainly a, uh a, you could think of a sign some kind of a warning sign um also, some outreach, possibly to the uh, to the uh, facility mm -hmm. uh, that uh, is a source of a good many of those wheelchairs. Yeah, so that that would be Concord Park, and yeah, yeah I I I'd be happy to reach out to uh, Mary Ellen King, who I believe is their their um, manager there. And just let her know this has happened. She, she, I'll bet has no idea that this is happening, because as at least in the two instant instances that we know about, you know, passersby have helped out and and gotten the gentleman unstuck and and able to get across the tracks. I'm not sure what happens when he goes back, mm -hmm. but. Um, you know, the, fortunately, people have been willing to to step up and and help him out. But you know, this could happen on a on a day that's a little drizzly or it's a little windy and there aren't a lot of people around, and he could end up sitting on the tracks and really be vulnerable. I think some um, outreach from from you to Concord Park would be very mm -hmm. you know, and, important. And, it's, it, it's not the only thing. I mean, there, there can be other people with wheelchairs there besides people from right, Concord right. Park, but yeah, well, and and a, a walker could get stuck in there too. It's yeah. it's yeah. not just wheelchairs. Janet, you have your hand. Were up. these people? Were the people who got stuck there from Concord Park? I don't know. the The person that I saw had was coming from the Concord Park side over to um, the the little park okay. by the the club car cafe. So I th I think you know I'm happy to reach out to her, but at the end of the day, the responsibility lies with the MBTA, not with True. people that want to be able to cross. Correct. So I I'm I can write. A, um, a letter, a complaint letter to the Architectural Access Board coming from the commission. Um, Megan, maybe you you and I can co-sign that. Sure. It will come from the town as well. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. And maybe we take pictures of all three locations if you didn't sure. already. And I, I do like the water bottle one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I took one with a pen. I, I thought I had a little ruler with me, but I didn't. Oh, um, yeah. So I just put a, a pen across, um, but I did measure it. When I, I'll, res well, I'll respond to um, Cataldo's team, Representative Cataldo's team and say, um, explain the relationship the commission's had before and um, 
say that this is a smaller project, we think with a higher impact and a critical public safety, you know, issue mm -hmm. and, um, and ask if we could talk to them directly, if you could help facilitate that. Great. One and say that we want a partner, you know, we want a partner. Like if this right. is some ARPA money that we could use for this, I would recommend that and try to do mm -hmm. what we can. Yeah. Uh, Carmen, Carmen Gentili is actually, you know, the representative for uh, one, at least one precinct in Concord and uh, some contact with him as well as with Simon could be good. Four, four precincts actually. Oh, okay. Down. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's that that is absolutely true. He gets ignored because he has so much of a the rest of his district is other places, but um, right. he is equal to si to Simon and our mm -hmm. representation. Yeah. yeah. And the two of them work together very well. Also, also Senator Barrett. Right. I, I would I would reach out to all three. Simon is is new and he's all excited and he's working like crazy. Kyle yeah. is old and you know, he's been in for a long time. So he's more relaxed about it. And but I think we should definitely involve Mike Barrett. Sure. I think we should involve all any yeah. letter you send out to the MBTA, I mm -hmm. think should go to all three of them. Mm -hmm. Um can I, yeah. I get a comment on so um in the very like very near future, like immediately, um, there are, you know, a three inch gap. It depends on what kind of mobility device one is using. If one takes a, a non-perpendicular direction path of travel, you're gonna run into some serious problems with a three inch gap. Your wheels can turn sideways, which is probably what happened and get yes. stuck in that three inch gap. If you're taking a immediate, like a direct perpendicular line of travel to that three inch gap, it is far less likely that your wheels are going to get stuck in the track gap and that you'll be able to get your front wheels over it. Typically on a wheelchair or even walkers, the back wheels are bigger than the front wheels. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's an opportunity to, to meet, like offer an opportunity for people to meet with and practice going over the tracks in, in mobility devices, or at least to demonstrate if they are gonna go over the tracks, like how to do it in the safest way possible, at least in the very near future. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if, if that's something that that Concord Park would be interested in participating. Like, I just feel like there's, or, or as Bob was suggesting, maybe some signage just to say, you know, please use extreme caution. It's terrifying mm -hmm. to think that those front wheels will just get turned sideways and then you can't get them out. Um, right. It, I, it's, I, yeah. <laughs> so I think that there's a technique that could be instructable, instructed, at least in the short term, if people were mm -hmm. interested um, to manage it. I also think maybe a photograph of some of how that looks when wheels get mm -hmm. stuck in the track might not be a bad thing. Um, I have a wheelchair and a walker I could bring to demonstrate. I don't, I hope I would get, be able to get it back out of the track so that it doesn't get yeah. permanently stuck in the right. track. Um, but I, that might also be an option. So if, mm -hmm. if there's going to be photos taken, maybe we could organize to have a photo of actually why it's a problem. Um, again, I'm having a hard time believing this is MBTA standard. Yeah. I, I, I can't wrap my head around that um, at all. So, yeah. Well, and, and, you know, the kind of an odd thing about it is when, when Mary Beth contacted the Wisconsin Railroad, they were like, we use this all the time. That's ridiculous. Why aren't they using this? So, but that, that's how things work. No new vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Okay, so just to, oh, Linda, you have your hand up. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I, again, I apologize for not being able to put on my visual. Um, I'm wondering, you know, obviously um, going the more diplomatic route one more time and um, 
CCing all our legislative reps is great, but I'm wondering what about, uh, is it channel five that does the spotlight on issues like this? I don't know if it's channel five or which one it is, but that's always a backup me me mechanism for something this serious, particularly since the safety issues for MBTA are getting a lot of play right now. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, we certainly could reach out to them as well and, and share the concern. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, about six months ago, I think it's CBS Boston did a story on a man who got stuck on tracks. He got stuck on tracks because his electronic, his electric wheelchair mis malfunctions, not because of the tracks. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I was going to suggest the press as, as well. So I was, I was thinking the same way Linda was thinking about that. Yeah. Okay. So. I'll try to summarize here. Um, Megan and I will write a, a complaint letter to the AAB about this that can come from the commission and, and from the town's ADA coordinator. Um, I'll reach out to the management at Concord Park to alert them to the concern and also ask if they would like to do some kind of, of you know, gentle training with some of their wheelchair users or or any kind of device users who who do want to want to uh, cross the tracks. And um, let's see. So Channel Five has their spotlight. No, the spotlight is Globe, right? Channel Five ha has their their investigative people. I think there's also Solve It Seven or something that's often something more to do with money, but it wouldn't hurt to reach out to them as well. Who is that, Jane? Solve It 7. It's on, on Channel 7 News. Channel 7 News. Okay. And, you know, maybe the Globe Spotlight reporters would like to, to be involved in this as well. It's not a big, deep, dark kind of issue that they can can work on for years like they do on some of theirs but but we could make it broader we mm -hmm. could um make this as one part of the yeah. ways in which people with handicaps are treated differently and say for instance this wheelchair got stuck mm -hmm. on the mpta trucks mm -hmm. we can make it a bigger deal than just this one sure well and and maybe also the concord bridge yeah just yeah. that will yeah. alert Alert. I think they would be Not very interested in it. Yeah. Linda. Yeah, I would just um, add to this, uh, your co most recent conversation, uh, and, and Megan should probably weigh in on this, but as soon as you start listing the three or four places where this might go for attention, um, you know, it might be helpful for um, the communications director to assist with a press release that went out to each one of these entities, but I'll let Megan weigh in on that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, t I mean, time is of the essence, so I don't want to slow anything down. But I think, I think that's a good point, Linda. Um, I, you know, I think we were kind of waiting to see what the MBTA said, and now, now that I we just got the note that they're they're going to work on a plan to address it, but not committing to a quick fix. It's like mm. that's what we do need is a quick fix. And right. we have a solution proposed for a quick fix. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think I know it's like how do you how do you advocate here um, to keep a good relationship, but like also this is super urgent and like we just can't have something happen. Like it's making me lose sleep at night. Honestly, I'm feeling very nervous about it. And so I don't. It's not really an answer, Linda, but I think that's a good point, and I'll have to kind of circle back on that. I think. For action items, though, I, I'm going to respond to this to Representative Cataldo's office. Ask for a meeting, and let them know that we'll be, we'll be we will be filing a complaint, and there will be a letter addressed to to our the legislators that you know here because, and we want to partner for a solution sure. Im immediately. Um, I'm I believe he wants to help us with this too, you know, and mm -hmm. it, so it's like, and, but you're right, he is new and and kind of navigating this as as we are. 
Yeah. But, you know, to his credit, he did jump, jump oh, on it right definitely. away. Definitely. No, de and, no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I was in Boston yesterday because he asked, asked me to come in and give some testimony on a bill that he presented that is, it's about, well, it'll help, help raise wages for direct care staff. Um, but I, I stopped and talked with him about that, but then also about this issue. And, and he, he was um, really on top of it, had already reached out and, um, you know, certainly cared a lot about it. Um, hey, Jean, uh, just as far as the, um, if we were to reach out to Channel 5, um, I imagine that Nat at Bruce Room and Rail Chair would also want to be part of that mm -hmm. conversation, and that sure. and that um, and that if I was a Channel Five reporter, I would want to go and talk to the person who maybe got stuck, and mm -hmm. I would want to talk to Nat, and I'd want to talk to other maybe you or someone from our commission and someone from the town, and so um, so sh should we. And, I mean, there's an email, Mike Baudet, I think is the person from, he's the reporter from Channel 5, and they make it very easy to get in touch with them oh, um, good. for newsworthy um, for newsworthy events and stories. So is this something um, we should reach out to Nat and put into motion? I think that's a great idea. Okay, so why don't I, why don't I reach out to, to Nat and okay. I will copy you and I will copy Megan on any communication does that sound right megan with channel five um, um i will i will be letting our communications uh okay. manager know about this um when we, okay. when we hang up um okay perfect so that would be the person request that I will go through her okay um, perfect good yeah okay great thank you yeah. um janet i didn't hear who megan said who did you say you were reaching out to the first name matt uh donna so janet Janet, I'm going to reach out to Nat, I think Nathaniel, um, Nat from the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail, and yeah, I will okay. talk to him okay. about getting in touch with Channel 5 and ask if if yep. we could do this together, because I do think it makes it yep. a more potent story. Yep. And a more I just didn't hear the first name. And then okay. Megan, Megan is going to, um, can, for, as far as the town's connection to any kind of press, Megan is going to connect us to the communications person at the town so that any and all requests for information or interviews would go through her. Donna is that person, correct, Megan? Yep, Donna McIntosh. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't filled her in on this yet. Yeah. So I will um, this evening okay. so that they're, Carrie, Carrie is aware of what's going on um, in our efforts, but um, the in, involving the media um, is, I think it's part of this discussion. So I, I will, certainly let them all know um, once we wrap up here. Great. Okay, so I think we've got a good plan going in a few different directions and uh, hopefully we'll we'll get some action on this. Quick action, so no one gets hurt. How did we hear about the, um, the original guy who got, I'm, I'm not taking minutes for this, I'm just curious. So Nat, Nat from the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail raised it first because he, he was aware of the first incident with someone getting stuck. And did that person contact Nat or how, how did that? I don't know if Nat heard about it by word of mouth or if he was, happened to be there and saw it. I don't think he saw it himself. Was, the, was that person in the wheelchair going across the tracks as part of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail? Or was he going just like from the parking lot to Club Car Cafe? I don't know the answer to that. I just was curious yeah. about why the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail was involved. I think they should be if mm -hmm. the trail goes over the tracks, they should be. Right. But this right. incident may not have been part of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. It may not have been on that area. I'm just curious. It's not mm -hmm. well, I I I don't know. It sounded like Nat's original one was that it was the rail trail crossing. Definitely the the incident that I witnessed was at the rail trail crossing. It was okay. So you know that there's a definite connection between the rail trail and the yeah. 
Yes. Okay. Yeah, because that because that makes a difference in how you approach the solution. I know. Are, are so they we, the we argument? Still, we still need the solution. No, but I mean, that's a different. That makes a difference in how you approach the argument. It's part true, of the true. Human real trail, right? So yeah. You can't, that, so the real, real trail is not accessible as long as this program exists. Right. Yeah, that was Jennifer's point. Yeah. Okay, so one one more piece of info for tonight is um, the um, the Acton Commission on Disability announced that they have a, a series of bicycles that are available to people in Acton for free or in, in other towns that are or anywhere that's not Acton for $5. And they've got, um, I think, six different bikes, different kinds of, of adaptive bikes, one of them being a, a, a bike that um, a, a passenger could ride in and, and then um, a, um, a non-disabled person could pedal. I sent you all this afternoon a flyer about it. I sent I sent you guys like three or four emails today. I'm sorry, I don't mean to blow up your inbox, but um, uh, I sent you all a flyer about it that that the Acton Group has um, has put out. And those bikes are available to to borrow from Nara Park. So it's right there at the at the rail trail. That very convenient. And um, Concord does have two um, adaptive bikes, and I didn't get I didn't make it down there to find out if they're if they're still being housed at the visitor center. But they were were being housed at the visitor center last summer. Yeah, they're not at the West Concord currently. Right, which would make a much you know, much better place for them mm -hmm. because that again is at the rail trail versus downtown Concord that doesn't have any any you know good space or safe space for somebody to be on a bike. Although let, lots of bikes go through there. Uh, so certainly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So other other comments, other issues, anything else for tonight? Linda, I see you have your hand up and then Jennifer. <laughs> Sorry to keep um, regarding the adaptive bikes in Concord. And uh, I do remember a previous conversation about this. I just don't remember the outcome. Has anyone spoken to the visitor center or whomever is, who has these adaptive bikes and asked if they can get relocated to West Concord? I, I talked with Beth about it last summer, and I, I don't think it necessarily was her decision, but um, I, I, my, my recollection is that at least one bike had been located, had been placed in West Concord, and it, it was damaged through vandalism. Mm -hmm. Karen, you, you seem to remember that. Yeah, and 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 I re I reached out to Beth also, but I I believe they re were relocated to Concord Center because um, they she felt they were more or she or some group felt they were more secure in Concord Center. There's more activity because of the locate. Well, the location of the bikes has since been moved, uh, um, but they're still in the the same general area along the rail trail, and um, they're. They're kind of sitting out there um, in a little patch of grass. So uh, I, yeah, anybody could come by and jiggle them away, I think. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought that at some point, I thought there was going to be some effort to re relocate the whole uh, rental bike program closer maybe to the train station and but I, I don't know if that's I don't know where the, oh, sorry I don't know if that's been followed up on yeah I I'm happy to reach out to Beth and see where that stands 
Um, I think there was, was some thought last summer, at least, about putting some cameras at in West Concord that, that would show the, the bikes. Megan, do you know anything about it? Yeah, I think there was, there, I think Erin Stevens, who I put you in touch with, Jean, is the transportation planner who's doing most of the management right now. And um, I had started to talk to her about um, a camera and she asked me some questions about it. I don't know where it stands right now, um, okay. but I think she'd be the contact to find out what's going on with that one. Sure. Also, I have, if you are distracted by this little one, I have a kid here with me. So thanks for your understanding. Oh, absolutely. She's very cute. Thank you. This is Hi. Molly. She's five. Hi, Molly. She loves public meetings. So. Good. <laughs> She's a future town manager. <laughs> or maybe legislator. <laughs> Senator. Senator, <laughs> president. <laughs> no pressure. Okay. Um, can I can I add one more item to our to our list? Sure. Um, last night I gave a presentation <clears throat> at Harvey Wheeler for um with regards to the all persons trail that is being yeah. planned at the Assabet River Bluff property, which was recently acquired. Um, as part of a collection of agencies looking to conserve six acres of land there um, next to the Assabet River. So um, there, you know, there were the standard um, levels of support and there was some, there was some dissent with regards to, you know, what kind of traffic and other inconveniences people might experience by making it more attractive. Um, but there was some, there was some general um, question, genuine questions about why do we need an all persons trail? Mm -hmm. um, that was a hard one to hear considering that we have almost no accessible trails in Concord, despite having an extraordinary amount of con conserved land, not just town land that's con conservation land, but we have a lot of private land trust property in Concord as well. And there's no, there's no uh, all persons trail on the private side. And we have very little on the town side. Um, so um, it was an interesting question and it was not the majority. It was just a few, but what it did, it, what it did make me think is that, um, is that when we have an opportunity to have something like this in our town and there's, an, there's, there's, um, um, an opportunity to give input on it that um, the commission should, I was giving the presentation, so I definitely represented for all of us here. That's not the problem. Um, but I definitely think that that someone from our commission needs to be there <laughs> when, when it comes to these type of meetings for this type of resource. Mm -hmm. um, as we all know, it's very difficult to stand in someone else's shoes. Um, but but if if a, if a user expert um, like someone from our commission can be there um, to talk about why spaces like this are really important, it would be helpful. So maybe what we could do, Jean, Jean if we could put um, if we could put the trail on our agenda for next next sure. meeting, I would be happy to do like a ten minute presentation of what's what what it's what the ideas are. Um, but just so that this commission knows there's an opportunity to comment on it. Um, the, the presentation and the slides will be posted on our town website, hopefully by the end of this week. And then there's like a two week comment period um, about, you know, whatever people have to say about the all persons trail. Um, and so when that goes up, I'll send you a link um, so that maybe we could distribute it to, to this commission. And then of course, this commission Great. is welcome to distribute it to whomever they um, have access to. Um, the property is located um, right along the Assabet River. It's along the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail, which is where one of the access points is. Um, one of the issues right now is, is there any parking near it? The closest parking is on the other side of the railroad tracks. Mm. <laughs> so our, our earlier discussion only um, only you know, em em you know emphasizes the importance of that crossing to 
not just getting across the railroad tracks, but accessing anything and everything on the other side of the railroad tracks, whether it's um, commercial businesses, getting to the train, you know, staying on the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail, accessing recreational opportunities, all that stuff. So um, yeah, they're connected. <laughs> If that would be okay, well, I'll, I don't mind making that presentation next month. That would be wonderful. Thank you. That would be really helpful. I, I had hoped to go to that meeting last night and at the last minute had to change plans. Um, but I'll as, certainly... As with most meetings like this, there's almost always another opportunity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so no worries. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> Where was that meeting posted? I I was interested, but I honestly never saw anything about it. Um, you know, I feel like there's there's so much going on that isn't communicated to, to us um, unless uh, you go to the website. I I, I don't yeah. know. It just seems um, yeah unfortunate. Didn't we have a conversation? I think it maybe was with Aaron at one point about how the town communicates um to everyone um with regards to events that are you know of interest to folks because not everyone signs up for the email so, right. you know um blast that the town has um not everyone is is connect connected to someone who knows about this and, and right. talk to them but i agree with you karen it, um there were some other folks who learned about it last minute so it's all on the website and it's a great central location, but it doesn't reach all the people, Everybody. especially, especially when we're talking about um, the special needs and disability and, and, you know, people who would be the most interested in using a trail that's meant for accessibility. You know, we just can't assume that, that it's going to be easy enough to get on a website and get that information. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Linda. Yeah. Um, so picking up on Jennifer's conversation, um, you know, this happens a lot with some of the public forums we have and other things. And to say that information is um, available on the website, often it's buried at the department level on their department page or somewhere else. And so the best way to get this out in the short term um, until we can think about this more comprehensively is submitting something specifically for news and notices. Um, you know, I, I think I saw the notice on Twitter, but again, not everybody's reading Twitter and maybe particularly the, the population that Jennifer pulled out, some of them may not be either. So um, that's one comment I was going to make. And um, let's see, we were what we were talking about Yeah, I, I think I'll leave it at that uh, for now. Um, yeah, it's always, it, and I, I have a need to bring this up at, in a, a number of different forums and different committees. Um, oftentimes the subject matter targets a population that may not be either computer savvy, may, not, may have so many conflicting things that they're dealing with unless somehow we find better mechanisms to reach them. <laughs> um, they're underrepresented in some very important conversations. There's no easy fix for all of this, but it's just something we need to always keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, it is hard. It's hard to to publicize things in in enough ways to make sure it gets out to all kinds of populations. Janet. Linda, Linda, who did you say, when you said send it to news and notices, what is that? How did that's, uh, um, it's the left hand column on the opening page of the town website. And I believe, um, Megan, correct me, I think it's Donna that would get, get the request. The opening page of the, of the Concord town website? Correct. And people can sign up for those and, and they get a, an email blast. Hmm. Well, Jennifer, thank you for offering to um, give us that info at the next meeting. That'll be really helpful. And uh, hopefully we'll have 
hopefully before the next meeting, we'll have an update on, on the issue of, of the train tracks and, um, and hopefully can, can get that issue resolved. Um, so I, again, I apologize to you guys about the change in date. That was totally my fault. I just, that, that first of the month on, on a Thursday went right past me and, um, so thank you for being willing to switch and, and I come think it went past meeting. everybody. So. so the next meeting, let me look at my calendar, will be July 13th, Thursday, July 13th at 5 p.m. We'll get back on the Thursday schedule. Okay, so I hope you all have, have a good month and a happy 4th of July. Happy Juneteenth next week. And um, we'll, as, as we know in FO that, that happens, if as long as I can do it in a way that doesn't, doesn't cross the open meeting law, I'll get info out to you about what's happening, especially with the, the train tracks issue. Okay, thank you all. This is not food. I'm just curious. Yeah. How, how did you hear about the train track issue? I I was on the email thread, the original email thread that Nat sent out. So that that's how I heard about I think it. It's a, I think that was a terrible situation. Oh, how, yeah. how did the person get out? Get did somebody get his wheelchair unstuck? How, what was the outcome? Well, the first the first accident or the first incident, there was a, a gentleman in the area who came and and assisted. the The one that I saw, um, there were three women who were in the area who all rushed over and and tried to help the the man get his wheels out of the train track. I think that's awful. It is. Right. It is. It's awful. It's scary, and you know wheelchairs other mobility devices yeah you know high heels pains yeah it's it's bad in a lot of ways so we'll see if we can't get the mbta to uh take some action on this okay thank you, everyone thank you thanks a lot see you all on are we are we adjourned we are adjourned so we are adjourned yes at 601 at 601 Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Oh, grazie. I understand that you've joined um, Concord after 60. I'm on that board. So welcome. You're you're muted, so I can't hear you. I can't hear you because you're muted. Can you oh, there you are. Can you yeah, I can now. Yeah, I'm but I just saw your name on list of new members. Oh, thank so you. So welcome. Much. Yeah, thank you. I'm really looking forward to it. It's it's it, it's an interesting group. When is the next meeting? Um, the next meeting is going to be a great one. It's going to be. Um, you'll get the bulletin that I do. I will send. In fact. It already went out, I think. I've forgotten. Yeah, I don't think I got it because I'm not okay, on. Okay, send me your send me your email address. Okay, I will. Okay, do you know it? Yeah, Janet Byer. Uh, I have J it. J B E Y E R. One. Yeah, yeah it's, it's on this list. Send me. Okay, yours is too. I'll send yeah. you a copy of the bulletin. It's going to be a garden party at Pam and Mark Hansen's house on. Um, on um Holdenwood Road. And, and when is that? Do you know? It's the third Sunday of the month. Of this month. Of July, yeah. Or of July. Third no, of June. Of June. Of this month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in a couple in a couple of weeks. I'll send uh -huh. it to you. I'll send uh -huh. it to you after, after I have my dinner. Oh bon appetit. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. it's gonna be Yogurt. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yogurt is a good dinner. <laughs> well, I had I had a big lunch, so. Oh, that's good.
But, it, yeah. but it's going to be like a garden party with just lemonade and cookies. That's but nice. Have a great garden. So, do they have any live music? Fine. Do they have any music? No, I don't. Yeah, think. that would be nice. I don't think so. That's beyond our capabilities. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that is that was really when I saw that that email with what happened at the rail trail. Or at the crossing at West Concord Crossing there. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. I'm I, like, I, I, was, <laughs> I can't imagine how that person felt who was stuck there. Stuck. I, that's right. Yeah. I really yeah. want to know more. Like, like, yeah. Like who found him? How did he get out? Who, who was sure. it? Sure. Yeah. Where was he coming from? Because he was it wasn't Gene's gonna reach out to Concord Park, but he wasn't from neither of the people have been from Concord Park. That's unbelievable. I mean, I'm just like astounded when I heard that. Yep. Oof. Yep. And now you're representing the con Council on Aging? I am. Yeah, yes, okay. I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll see you at the Hanson's house. I'll send you that right away. Thank you. And I have a question. Do you know how to get access to this link since it was recording? Do you know? No, no I don't. I'll have to ask Jean. Ask Jean. I've never, I've never, I know, I've known that I've never going to, if, if, when I'm taking the minutes, if I don't know something, I'm just going to skip it. <laughs> I'm not going to go back and watch the whole video again. Yeah. <laughs> nobody, nobody's going to read the minutes who's, nobody reads the minutes is going to be that critical if I skip something. <laughs> That's why I wanted it. I want to make sure I have all the important points. We yeah. actually don't have to report anything unless it's relevant to the council on aging but i think a lot of the things you discussed tonight are relevant so i will well certainly the railroad tracks yeah absolutely it's very relevant yeah yeah absolutely yeah it's a good committee yes I, it is gene is, gene is wonderful gene you guys are very active <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah they are i don't do a lot i that's why i take the minutes because i don't do much else yeah, but that's great. Taking the minutes, I'm the new secretary for the Council on Aging. Oh. And so I haven't done my first minutes yet. That'll that's coming up next week on Tuesday. So we'll see how I do. Well, I I don't do very and, and you know, I just figure as I said, nobody's gonna read them that carefully anyhow. So if I skip something entirely, it's not gonna matter. Well, what I like to do is summarize rather than going through all the back and forth and back and forth. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, exactly. And, and that yep. helps me when I can watch it again, that if I caught the summary correctly. Yeah. 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 So. Okay, I'm going to hang up. Thank you very much for talking. Okay, I'll, to see, you I'll see you. At, I'll see you. Welcoming me. Thank you I'll so see much. see you at the Hansons house. See you at the Hansons. Bye. Okay, Ed, you be sure to introduce yourself to me because I won't remember. that. We yeah, no problem. <laughs> okay okay have a good night thanks you too bye Is it, do you pronounce it gracia or gracia gracia like pizza gracia gracia yeah with a tz it's italian gracia. Okay. yes you got it see gracia okay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay See have you a then. good night bye thank you too bye, bye.